To everyone new joining us, welcome to Let's Learn StarCraft. To everyone old who's joining us, good on you for continuing to learn what I will very biasly claim is the greatest game ever made, StarCraft. On Tuesday, we talked about principles of micromanagement that underlied all the races, looking at shapes, deficiencies there, talking about core differences between melee and ranged, and of course, long sips of water for dramatic effect. We're going to be building upon that by looking at the micro of each race specifically, sort of the implemented versions of some of what we have seen there. And in particular, we're going to be looking at pretty much each unit one at a time. There's going to be a few exceptions in the Zerg one. I did not do the Devourer because there's nothing micro worthy about it. I'm also really not doing the Firebat because I can just say to you what's important about the Firebat instead of showing you. So we're just going to start looking at though the fundamental unit, the microbial unit of Terran the Marine. And we're going to look at some of the same stuff that we talked about yesterday, but in some different context. So we see this Marine here. Um, I, I talked about don't stutter step, and part of the reason is because Marines have a very, very quick attack rate, especially when they're stemmed. I think that I, oh yeah, I slow this game down. Slow this game down to show that part of the reason that Marines feel very blocky and like they don't move very much is that they have this time where they pull their gun away. They shoot and pull the gun away. Shoot and then pull the gun away. So if you want them to move, they're just not going to move very far. So when Marines are stimmed, they shoot so quickly that any movement at all means that your Marines suck. They're not shooting! So Marines are a, are a really weird unit. They, they behave... I, I think they are the most... Um, Oh yeah, this is me trying to stutter step in slow motion. It just doesn't even work. <laughs> I, I think that Marines are the most... Um, strategy... I don't know, the most identity-deformed unit in the game. It's just a weird unit. Just really, really weird. The reason being, it has extraordinarily high damage output on an individual level. Because it's a ranged unit, and it's small... A lot of Marines can pack together, so groups of Marines have the highest damage output, period. They greatly surpass everything in the game. I mean, I've talked about Zerglings having the highest damage output. That's a, the one unit, right? But, like, packs of Marines deal damage faster than anything else. But also, Marines have near the lowest health in the game, beaten only by the Zergling at 35 health. Marines have 40 health, so they're stupidly fragile. And they attack so fast that you don't want to be moving them. So, it's not even like you can micro. Oh, but the fourth weird thing is that they are also unbelievably fast so you can run away. They're sort of like a ranged zergling in a lot of ways. The marine is primarily about battle selection, picking fights that you think that you can engage in, uh, and two, trying to avoid stragglers. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. I just want to stress that in in general, anytime we have ranged units against melee units, we're looking for this shape. We're looking to sort of peel around. Um, and as an example, I have these three Marines that are going to be fighting here against this Zealot. This is the same clip that we saw on Tuesday, right? Totally fine. Usual stuff. If you watch the Zerg video, same thing, Hydras versus Zealots. Just peeling away in, in that triangular formation. <clears throat> uh, Marines also are very good at exploiting positions, similar to the Hydralisks. Marines are small, and they tend to path quite well in small places. So these four Zealots that would pretty much own these Marines. Marines can get into a good angle. And remember, I've, I've been showing slow Marines... Almost always you won't have slow marines, you'll have fast, stimmed marines. And so these marines will have opportunities to pick where they fight. Uh, pretty much only lings and mutas are faster than marines. And all the rest of the times, and all the rest of the circumstances, the marines are kind of dictating when and where stuff happens. Um, 
battle selection really important. We're going to step into battle selection in a little bit, but a lot of marine control is identifying these shape problems that will emerge here. If I'm moving up here, I'm starting to get into a line formation. Maybe I want to... Oh, there's a straggler there. Let me peel him back. There's another straggler. I'm just kind of doing cleanup duty. And I actually think at the start of this video, there were some even better examples here. Oh, you see that group of five at the front? God, you know what? I'm worried mutalists are going to pick those off. Those guys are going to go to their death. Let me actually just grab those and pull them back and then send them forward with the troops. Cleaning up, cleaning up, avoiding deficiencies in shape, avoiding deficiencies in shape. And it's not always clustered together. Sometimes you want them to spread apart. We'll see that in a little bit. So much of Marines is looking at how they're moving and go, oh, that's not right. No, come on, come on. You know, doing a little bit of, of sheep herding. Um, I think in a moment I wind up actually using Stim. So here I Stim all the Marines and move them down. And this is where you can get some real wild looking shapes that wind up happening as the units are moving very, very quickly. You'll notice that when any clumping occurs for stimmed marines, they really chop up hard. Because you have ultra fast units that suddenly hit a snarl and they're not moving, period. So identifying these and doing things like spreading out, grouping together against mutilus, things like that. Super important. Holy shit, I have a lot of marine videos. Look at that. Um, something that's very important to note, you heard me talk about um, things being clumped together as, you know, maybe if you're against mutilus, you kind of want to stay in a nice tight pack. A lot of the times you'll just want the mobility. And so making sure that you are spreading out is really important. Here I have some stimmed marines and I'm trying to say retreat them. Notice the medics that are healing. Oh, those jerks. Medics can be so obnoxious. Medics can be such a pain when you stim and you try to run through them. They're blocking the pathing because technically they're doing exactly what you told them to do. They're healing. Even when you tell the medics retreat with the marines, guess what? The medics move slower than stim marines, so they're still pathing blockers. It still causes a lot of uh, traffic congestion. And as much as like as people like to complain about the, you know, oh, I need to fix the pathing. There's simple solutions around this. Just have one control group move up and one control group move down. And notice that I'm one clicking up there, two clicking down here. One, ah, I need to slow it down. Uh, if, if I may brag in a very thinly veiled way, I'm clicking too fast. Standing by. Okay, so I'm gonna stim. And I just one click up, two click down, one click up, two click down, one click up, two click down. No congestion. Medic's still trying to heal. Almost no traffic snarlage that's happening. Simply by spreading my clicks a little bit, my Marines are behaving in a much better fashion. So, for instance, if I am up against some lurkers and the lurkers burrow and I want to run away, I shouldn't one click here, two click here, three click here. No, I'll hit a snarl up at the front as they all run into the medics and everything will die to the lurkers. I wanna click one up here, control group two here, and control group three here. So they fan out first, and then I can do a full retreat. Uh, this is a very minor note. Um, I'm kind of talking about the medic and the marine at the same time. You'll rarely ever see them separated, so may as well. It's not like, oh, he's going for a medic marineless build order. If he's doing that, enjoy the big game hunters match. We all know you're not taking it seriously and you're doing the right thing. It's important to have fun in life, but we're here to win some goddamn video games. Build medics with your marines, okay? So the, the, the medics, um, this is a small point. If you select medics and marines at the same time, you lose the ability to hit the stim button. Because see how Marines have stim? Oops, I accidentally forgot to talk about this. Uh, medics, if you select them, the three abilities are Heal, Restoration, and Optic Flare. More commonly known as Heal, and what's this ability, and what's that ability? 
If you select the Marines, you'll see that the Marine has replaced where the healing was with the stim pack on the command card. So if you select all of it, nothing shows up. You see that? You see how there's no stim down there? Very simple mistake to make where control one is 10 Marines and two medics. Control two is 10 Marines and two medics and you just can't stim anymore. It sucks. Minor point, but still an important one to make. Um, I want to show some of the relationship between, um, or I want to show some, some Marines in some real life contexts. And what we're going to see now is the intersection of all these weird properties of Marines, right? Ultra high damage, ultra low health, really cannot move and shoot at all. You kind of want them to stand still. Got to be very important with the battle selection there. Um, oh, but can retreat super easily. What do you do when there's a bunch of Zerglings coming in? So here, I stim and I try to retreat. It's a very intuitive thing to do, right? But look right here. These Marines are just getting eaten up because the medics are forming a freaking wall. This is a really common looking shape the medics wind up behind the marines because the marines have been stimming and running so far ahead that the medics kind of form a blob in the back and so when players see marines often the medics just form these walls Ugh. and that can wind up being really rough but if i no pause damn it if i slow this thing down there's a really important thing happening here which is, if you think you can win the fight, just sit there and shoot. So look, here I start to lose some Marines. The instant I turn and shoot, this is where I can just grab a small column, like just this one guy, pull him back, and then the medics form a block, and I just obliterate everything. I don't even pause the video. I got... Get myself some more Marines. Yeah. More Zerglings coming in aplenty. Remember there being three things that we did here. Oh yeah, here I just shoot. Do you see how well the Marines performed when they were just shooting? There's nothing wrong with just sitting there and shooting. And in fact, a lot of what you're trying to do as Terran is just identifying when you're strong, going in. And then just sitting still and firing. And if your Marines didn't actually live and they died really badly, I wouldn't credit it with a micro decision. I'd more often credit it with a incorrect strategic decision. So in this case, after the stim, the medics that were in the wall in front, they still peel around to the back to heal. And here's the sort of micro that you should look to do. I'm just gonna grab all these Marines because I'm starting to see some surface area here. And I know I have medics in, in my group. I just scoot back just a bit. So now these medics are forming a slightly better wall. The Zerglings have a brief moment where they don't attack. Get a little more healing on my medics. And I, I don't think I lost anything there. I think I didn't lose anything. Um, some simple micro tricks. When you're up against lurkers and things. You run past. So that way it absorbs the lurker fire. And you can just go in. There's a thing I do right at the end here. Um... As this engagement is done, when I want to retreat, notice I group one, group two. Group one is above, group two is below. Again, spreading them out. And I think... What's this one? Ah, yeah. Here's another very common circumstance that will happen. So we're going to see some micro here. It's not going to be complicated micro, 
Um, and, and I really can't stress this enough with Marines. There's there's tons of little cute things you can do with sending a Marine this way and that way. But you, you're really, with Marines, just trying to find the opportunity to stop moving and just blow everything up, right? That's the skill. It's not as precise angle clicky as mutilisks or wraiths or something like that. So look at this fight. A lot of lurkers, a lot of lings. How are we going to go up against this? How are we going to fight against this? Watch some of the most basic-ass micro in action. Happens. I wait for the lurkers to burrow. And at that exact moment when they burrow, I just pull back and cook everything else. I think I lost more than I should have there. Uh, I think I should have grabbed these and pulled them away because the medics weren't healing them, so these guys got eaten up. Yeah, those guys. Oh, oh, I'm an idiot. I know what happened. All right, let me, let me explain to you what happened. I, I, uh, I issued to the medics a hold position command. So here I... Yeah, here I... In this frame, I tell them to hold position so they stop moving and stop healing as well. <laughs> okay, sorry. I got distracted by that. Anyways, in this moment, the key micro decision is identifying exactly when those lurkers are burrowing. And then I pull back and I just blow everything else up. And now Lur Zerg is in a really bad spot because he has lurkers unprotected by any Zergs. I got no backup at all, dude. And that's, this is basically it. This is fine to just disengage and pull back and then just shoot stuff. Marines with stim shoot so quickly, it's often incorrect to micro them too much. Um, I think that be, the, the most common micro that people get excited about is spreading out against lurkers. And often it's easy to look at this and go, well, there's three lurkers there and there's a small number of Zerglings. Let me go in. Here's what happens when you try to stim in there. And whoops, there's actually four lurkers here. I don't even think I had time to micro in this. Look at how quickly my stuff dies. I stim, there's a brief moment to heal. This blows up. Lurker spawn goes up here, this blows up. Shouldn't have fought. Shouldn't have fought. I mean, it could be argued that, oh yeah, you know the problem? The problem is that this is too much of a cluster. These guys should have been down there. I can, I can see merit to that. But if you're spreading out against lurkers, you're giving more surface area to zerglings. It's okay just to not fight. I want to encourage you, if you're a Terran player playing with Marines, it's just okay not to fight. few more things for the Marine before we move on. Um, Marines, a lot of the times, um, well, actually, any ranged unit where you're doing some short range versus long range and you want to make sure that all your dudes are able to shoot at that. Uh, we saw this in Hydralis versus Dragoons, but against these sunken colonies, this Terran player is going to stim. And then it's going to walk forward into range, like well into range of the sunken colonies, to where every marine can shoot at that sunk, and then the marine's going to target fire. See, look, well within range, but now everything can shoot all at the same time. And suddenly, these sunken colonies die way more quickly. Other thing to note, if you have marines versus mutilisks, it's very tempting to stim and to A-click. Stim and right-click on a, on a specific mutilisk. Do you see how fast that one mutilisk died? Let's look at it again. This is just, I hate that. It makes me shudder as a Zerg player. Another one down, just boom, popped it. Target firing the mutilisks greatly increases the chance that you just pick one off. It's easy to just spread all of your damage like this. Look at how many shots this is. And just one more died. Some target firing, one's down, two's down, three's down. Target fire. Target fire with your marines. Alright, that's what I have to say about the marine. 
next unit that we're going to talk about. Um, oh yeah, the fire bat. All you really need to know about the fire bat is you shouldn't build them in large numbers. Maybe two all game long against a zerg right at the start just to support against a pure zergling army. But um, frankly, even nowadays, they're very rarely used. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're a very, very rarely used unit. Uh, I've seen one player, uh, who is it? Is it uh, Mind? Mind, the Terran player, has been experimenting with Mass Firebat versus Defiler Lurker in the late game. But then they're, all they are is a melee unit that's just running into Dark Swarm. They don't have any sort of unique micro, other than the fact that it fires in a line. So you don't want your Firebats getting too far away from your Marines. That's all I got to say about it. Vultures. Here's the really sexy micro here. The patrol micro that we talked about in the principles of micro video. All I do is I Q click. And as long as there's something in range, it's very easy for me to move these vultures around very easily. Picking off all these zerglings. These vultures have speed. Zerglings have speed. Still way faster. Zealots. Real easy to do the move and shoot micro against. And for as much as vultures are running around the map, making all sorts of interesting decisions, being cool and stuff, there's not a lot of fancy tricks to vultures. Um, there's the classic vulture with mine trick, which is if I want to plant mines quickly, I should select a small group and then place the mines and look at how they all plant in formation. This was covered in the principles of micromanagement, but bears repeating. I want to plant a minefield really fast. Lots of small boxes and the I button. Small box I, small box I. I don't know what these two fire bats are doing here. They wanted their own micro video. Nope, too bad. Um, for all the, the crazy movement that moves, uh, that you'll see vultures do, a lot of it is just the basic decision making of, is there a angle here that I can get into and start killing off workers? If yes, I go through it. If not, I don't. And there you have it. In terms of combat, I think it, this can't be stressed enough that vultures just die fast. So having them in the front is great to maybe pick off initial zerglings, to pick off initial zealots moving in. Like this. See how one volley of shots goes off? They deal a lot of damage, but because they don't have health, often vultures will retreat behind their stronger tank buddies. And now the tanks are absorbing the shots so that the vultures can deal the damage. Pulling vultures back is great. So good pulling them back behind tanks, pulling them back to Marines. Vultures are not born to fight in the front lines. They want to harass and go on vacation. That's what they're about. Um, the tank. Okay, the tank has some very interesting properties. It can't stutter, or it can stutter step. It's one of the very good stutter stepping units in the game. A lot because of how its turret works. Notice that I told this tank to shoot my own fire bat. Notice its little turret stays pointed. So in other words, the tank does not suffer from what other units in the game suffer from. Many units in the game have a model that must turn around. So if I am running away from you and then I turn around, shoot, turn around, move, turn around, shoot, each one of those turnarounds is taking up time, thereby weakening the stutter stepping. But the tank has this turret that stays aimed. If I move sufficiently far away, you'll see it rotates back. But if I stay within range, yeah, the turret winds up continuing to point. This was not correct stutter stepping. This the, the, this specific video was me showing the turret behavior. If we actually look at the way that correct um, stutter stepping looks, I mean, it's just what you'd think. You just have to make sure that you are, oops. I forgot I included this. If you move this way and then click on this or A click this way, notice I A click this way, you'll see the treads rotated around. Ugh, fuck. 
gross. But if I A move this way, the treads point in the correct direction, but the turret faces away. So now I can just do good old fashioned stutter stepping. Next to my friendly Ultralisks. Great. Um, a lot of the siege tank is about deciding when and where to siege. The name of this video is Don't Siege All at Once. You're, you're bound to do this at some point where you're just like, Ah, an enemy! And you just hit the O button. Try doing things like, as you're retreating... Spread out, siege a few guys in the back up, and then siege some more. The, the difficulty of doing this is largely prohibited by if you're feeling overwhelmed. Second to that, it's making small boxes and very deliberate clicks, because you do have to siege up quickly. Small box, move a few, siege. Small box, move a few, siege. Small box, grab a few more, siege. Um, there's the alternative version, which is moving forward. Absolutely. Just yes, sir. siege, siege. Notice I'm, I'm sieging some of the back ones and then sort of extending forward. By the way, I just want to note, right here, when you saw this lag, you're going to see, you're going to see it really choke right here, right as I'm moving. Absolutely. Ah! Ugh, that's actually StarCraft Remastered choking because we were in this game for three hours today and it crashed right after I recorded this next video. Woo, baby. Um, some of the other things about sieging up um, in terms of getting into an engagement, it's very easy to see those Dragoons up there and to say, oh, let me move my tanks forward and range the Dragoons. And then let me siege up and shoot him. Instead, what you should do is pre-siege your backline tanks first. And then siege a few more tanks that are close up. These tanks just blow up immediately. And then, if these are the first tanks that can shoot the enemy, great! Great! Don't bring all of your tanks forward. That's a big tactical screw up. It's very easy to get flanked, get overwhelmed, and die, right? You want to first place those tanks down because these are what are solidifying your push, and then this is the start of the push. Um, the danger of not doing that is this video that I recorded a long time ago of Stork versus Fantasy, where Fantasy sees the army coming in and look at how late he sieges up. He does some spreading, but he, he gets the siege up right here. These tanks are going to fire and blow up. Oh my gosh, it's going to be... It's going to be awful. I'd like to stress there's some key things that you're already seeing from the vulture. Notice the vultures were behind the tanks, gobbling everything up. But the important thing is, if you wanted to push out, this is a pretty long distance. There's nothing wrong with, right now, sieging stuff up. Just sieging up everything. And then unseaging half of it, and then moving half forward and sieging it. Slows the push down by a lot. But you don't want to have no supporting siege when fights begin. You're seeing the zealot bombs, or the zealots on the tanks up here, you're seeing the storms here. Um, make sure that you have your tanks sufficiently spread out. Even if you do the lightest amount of spreading, here we have two clumps. Just the fact that I couldn't, as Protoss, get enough zealots over here. helped. Even just having two clumps helps. I lose this quite badly as Protoss. Something like this is ideal. Something really spread out. It doesn't look that much more spread out. Um, 
but it, it, it's very hard for me to get almost any pick off on tanks. One or two's dying at a time. Vultures can pull back and clean that up, and... Not only did the Vultures not clean that up, but just with the siege tanks friendly firing each other. Hardly any tanks died that day. It's good stuff. So, a lot of uh, proper micro and execution with the tank is deciding how to position them, making sure you have this back line. Uh, oops. Making sure you have this back line pre sieged up, making sure you're spreading. And I, I can't stress enough, it's so important to siege small groups of tanks here, small group of tanks here, small group of tanks here, small group, 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 group. Not everybody all at once. Pretty much in all matchups. Let's talk about the Goliath, man. Let's talk about the Goliath. Um, the hold position button works so nicely with the Goliath. So nicely. Watch how easily I'm able to kill this Overlord. So I'm just going to go up and I'm just going to hit hold position. There's one weird thing about the Goliath. You'll notice the tank has the turret on the top that can like point this way and then point, it can point 360 degrees, no problem. The Goliath can turn 270 degrees, so it can turn mostly back this way, forward, and then mostly back this way, but it can't get all the way back. So notice, as I'm moving to the left, it's turned kind of like as much as it can be to try to shoot this guy. So whenever you're doing hold position micro with the Goliath, if you're running away from your enemies, give enough time for the Goliath to turn around. I actually whiff a shot here because that's exactly what I did. See as I'm running away, I hit hold position, but then I click again. So he just goes, eh, eh. I'm actually gonna rewind again because I'm just so happy that that happened. So here I go, I'm running, hold position, shoots, hold position and I click, eh, oh. Designated sack. Just give it enough time to turn. Hold position. So good. I love hold position with this unit. It's so great. Um, one of the things that's weird about the Goliath on ground. Also great with hold position. But for whatever reason, the attack button doesn't like work half the time. I'm gonna be A click, A click, A click, A clicking on this a lot, right? A, A. See, look, hold position micro. Great, hold, hold, A click. Look at this, I A click, A click. Oh, and he stops, he keeps like not, A click, keeps not. And I hover over the hold position because I'm like, this button is so much better. Again, I, I wanna stress, look at me, A clicking. A click. A click. A click. A click. But then when I go back to hold position, it's great. Hold. 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 Yeah, it's amazing. Hold position button. That's what you want to do with Goliath. 100%. Alright, let's talk about the science vessel. Who doesn't love the science vessel? So, defensive matrix can be used in a lot of really intuitive ways. If there's something that's at the front of your army that's taking the damage, you defensive matrix it. Works especially well if you have like ultralisks against marines. The ultralisk that's hitting your marine at the front, you defensive matrix that marine. Or if you're artosis, you defensive matrix that ultralisk. This can be extended to some other little cute situations where if you're on a ramp, you can defensive matrix a worker to block and it's very hard for your opponent to get up here. If you have units that are here, he has to manually right click on the SCV. Um, Defensive Matrix is just really strong putting at the putting at the front. Some more tricks with Irradiate. Uh, the Eraser. <laughs> LQ13 says LL the Artosis. Jab, let me tell you something. 
I poke fun at Artosis, but you literally are not a real StarCraft player unless you have told all your workers to stop right at the start of the game when you have six workers and you're spamming for APM, you accidentally stop everything. Or maybe it's when you had two in gas all game long and lost because you didn't have enough gas. Or maybe you build nine Mutalisk out of your eggs, accidentally hit escape, canceling all your Mutalisks and immediately ending the game. Or... Defensive Matrixing and Ultralisk when you're trying to hit one of your Marines. These are StarCraft mistakes, man. Okay. So, the Eraser move is where you have two vessels irradiate each other. Vessels don't take damage from Irradiate, but all nearby biological units do, so you can sweep through mineral lines pretty quickly. Here's another really common circumstance that happens. 46 energy, 48 energy. And then... You have a big pack of vessels. Have you ever been in the situation where you're trying to say, who the hell has energy for irradiate? Very normal, right? You have seven vessels. You've been macroing at home like crazy. You're trying to manage battle at like 15 different locations. And then you go, oh, I got to irradiate some defilers and some lurkers. Real easy. Select everything. Press irradiate. Click on one thing. All the vessels that start moving, those are the ones that have energy. Great. So now that these are the ones that have energy, look, these two guys that don't have enough energy, they're not doing anything. So now I can just manually deselect some vessels, issue them new commands, and pull away. I know that all of them have at least one irradiate. Super simple, very clean. This is the big reason why whenever you watch a lot of pro Terran players play, They'll be moving around with their squad of vessels, and then only the vessels with energy seem to move forward. It looks like just these ones break away. Super clean, super easy. What happens in the rest of this video? I think I, I literally am waiting. Oh, yeah. Uh, the last thing is that Vessels are a very nice unit for the cloning technique where you shifty select, shifty select, shifty select while casting irradiate commands in order to irradiate a whole bunch of lunkers. Now, e EMP is a little weird. Um, so EMP says anything that's hit by EMP loses all shields and all energy. It is a surprisingly small radius, and so it's not very useful against Protoss shields. Uh, but it's very useful against energy, like denying Arbiter energy or hitting a pack of Wraiths to kill their cloak, something like this. So I have one of my science vessels here moving across. I EMP it, and we do in fact see that it loses all its energy. I have a Wraith here. My Wraith? Come on. My Wraith is moving by. And if I EMP the Wraith, whoops, didn't work. Sometimes if units are fast enough, sometimes if units are fast enough, they just won't get hit by the Irradiate. And so this is part of the struggle with EMP, is that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Trask was amazed as well. Um, if you you have to lead the EMP shot, but again, it's a pretty small radius. So like this strike location didn't hit this wraith. Isn't that amazing? That's full energy. It's fine. So you have to be pretty precise with the EMP timing. And I mean, I don't know how else to say this to you. This is a skill shot. You just got to practice a skill shot. Speaking of wraiths, wraiths are much like my new pimped out car. They hover, hover, hover. Much like the Mutalisk or the Scout, wraiths can move and shoot at the same time. So long as you're issuing a move command and clicking... Um, attack on the target, it will receive damage. Similar to Mutalisks and all flying units, all hovering units, we can select with a faraway worker. We can cluster them all up, moving in little circles, and it's so great. 
Wraith's air attack actually has very long range. So, I am really not the best with Wraith control. But you can wind up in these funky micro battles against Mutalisks, where you're moving towards the Mutalisks, and you can shoot your Wraith missiles before the Mutalisk can ever hit you. Flash has been popularizing a Vulture Wraith opening that sometimes winds up in spots where it's like three Wraiths versus nine Mutalisks, and he's pretty godlike to watch. You should check out his YouTube channel. To find it, look up Flash Brood War YouTube. I certainly don't know how to type in his YouTube channel. That's what I do every time. And then because they're hovering units, you can move and shoot at the same time. Wraiths also function in a very Muta-like fashion. You can use them to go harass workers, to pick off key targets, but they, they actually have pretty long range. I mean, this is this is really long range compared to what I'm used to at a Mutalisk. I actually keep getting way too close. I'm still way, way too used to uh, Mutas. I mean, this, this range is like spooky long to me. Alright, let me show you a type of micro that I'm like awful at. The Valkyrie micro. Okay, I I'm, I really struggle with this. So here's the thing about the Valkyrie. Um, the Valkyrie can't move once it started shooting. So notice I'm spam clicking. So here's attack. It's attacking. Click, 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 click. Doesn't do it. Click, 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 click. Do you know how annoying that is when you see Scourge and you're trying to run away with your Valkyrie and she's like, I am eager to help, and she just blows up to the Scourge? Really tilting. Well, there's a micro trick where, remember, every micro trick has to do with the patrol or the whole position button, where what I do is I move towards the target, then I hit patrol opposite myself. What happens is, with patrol, the first thing that my Valkyrie will do is turn around to move towards that location because she's patrolling to that location. At which point she will immediately acquire the target that um, is nearest behind her and she will shoot at it while moving away. Watch. I mess this up a lot. I am not good at this. <laughs> I'm so bad. Hold on, hold on, here it comes. I think I'm like, screw it, let me try with this overlord. Alright, I mess it up. Hold on, hold on, it's gonna happen. There it is. See that? Isn't that, doesn't that look really nice? And this Valkyrie is moving to where I click the patrol button to. So there we go, three in a row, what more do you want from me? So it's kind of tricky, you move towards... And then patrol click behind at the correct angle. And she runs away while shooting all her missiles. Super important. If you are wanting to fight against Scourge and Mutas with Valkyries. You just can't be sitting still with that. Alright, that this is all I have for the Valkyrie. The Valkyrie is just a unit, man. The Valkyrie is like the Devour. She's completely unremarkable in all ways. I talk about this in the principles of... Um, uh, micromanagement video. If you want to load things into the dropship, select everyone, say go into the dropship, then select just the dropship itself. If you want to unload, unload by hitting you on top of the dropship. All of the other methodologies are less efficient. They're a little bit choppier. <laughs> Play me and says buff Valkyrie. Nope, she doesn't need a buff. She's Perfectly strong, excellent unit. There's nothing microable about her. Battlecruiser is actually the same way. Battlecruiser is a totally kick-ass, badass unit. Has all sorts of uses in the game here of the StarCraft 2s, but... Or excuse me, in the StarCraft 1s. Whoopsie daisies! Uh, but there's not a lot to micro. Battlecruisers are just huge, strong, deal a lot of damage. The only exception would, of course, be the Yamato Cannon. Where you can use cloning. And, I mean, it's the same thing with the ghosts. I don't even want to talk about this ghost unit, man. Ghosts are awful in this game, dude. Oh, they can lock stuff down. Oh, interesting. 
Oh, that's so fascinating to me. All right, you want to see some ghosts lock stuff down? You want to see the laziest cloning in the world? I'm going to lock down my own vessels, but you know what? Okay, so first of all, look, I include this. I didn't have to include this. I don't know what was wrong with me. I show that ghosts don't deal a lot of damage. Look at this. Two damage, two damage, two damage, two damage, two damage, two damage. I pull away and I'm like, lock everything down. And then I just give up. I'm like, whatever, man. Boo. Gops. Boo. Not a good unit. All right, that's the perfect way to end this episode. So, um, you know, I, I'm realizing the structure of this show is really weird because I'm starting with all the good stuff and I'm ending saying boo to a ghost. <laughs> well, the next time I do a StarCraft micro series, I'll keep that in mind. So, um, the key things that um, I, I'd want to stress from this episode for Terran players is that Wraiths and vultures are your very mobile, run and shoot, and dive at different angles and pick stuff off units. But marines and tanks, in a lot of ways, are very similar. It's about finding the right place to set up and then just deal your damage. For marines, yeah, they can retreat. Be sure to pull out in a tough situation. Make sure that you're spreading your clicks so your marines spread out so they don't path block each other. Make sure you're cleaning up your groups. But most importantly with marines, just sit there and shoot stuff. Don't over micro. I think marines are the most over micro unit in the game, especially considering how Boxer, Nada, I Love Oove, and now Flash have shown these extraordinary plays with the marine. You don't, you, you don't want to do that almost always. Most of what Flash does with his marines is he sits there and wins the game. You should do that too. With the tank, spread things out pre-siege. Siege early and leapfrog forward. If the push is here and tanks need to be here to begin shooting, siege up here and here and here first and last siege up at the front to begin moving in. Hopefully this gives you some techniques to practice. I think as you saw with the Valkyrie thing, even someone like me who's played this game for 20 years on a pretty consistent basis, I'm really terrible at that one. All these things take time to practice. Hell, even the Mutalist control, I was biffing a little bit in the Zerg video. So, encourage you to keep giving it a shot. You're going to do great. It's going to be awesome. We're going to once again take a two-minute break. When I come back, Protoss units. Oh! <gasps>